and welcome to the Good Girl Confessional Podcast. I am, of course, your host, Sandy Lowrys, and the Good Girl Confessional Podcast is proudly brought to us by WB40, Women Beyond 40 magazine and platform, and we are soon to release our WB40 in Business magazine. Keep an eye out for that. You can check us out at WB40.com. Today in the podcast, I am incredibly honoured to chat with our very, very special guest, Sam Bloom. Sam is an extraordinary human being who um, has gone through an extraordinary amount in her life. Her life changed forever when on a family holiday in Thailand in 2013, she leant on a railing and sadly uh, the railing broke and Sam would fall. Her life has been fraught with many challenges since then. However, Sam has gone on to become a champion para surfer um, and a para um, canoeist. She is quite um, a brilliant athlete, but she is also the subject of an extraordinarily beautiful film starring Naomi Watts called Penguin Bloom. Um, An unlikely little creature that came into Sam's life would help her very much to heal as well. It's an ongoing journey, of course, but we are so excited to welcome Sam here into the confessional. Please welcome her, Sam Bloom. Hello, Sam, and welcome to the confessional. I'm thrilled to have you here. Well, thank you so much for having me. (laughs) Um, I have I was just saying to you off air I was fangirling a little bit telling you that I've been a huge fan of yours for quite a long time Um, and your beautiful book which is here if for those who can see this it's called Heartache and Birdsong Um, it's a best-selling book and it's beautiful and it's a a bit of a love affair here with your beautiful magpie penguin (laughs) (laughs) beautiful So thank you so much for joining us. You've got, you've had such an extraordinary life and an extraordinary journey. Um, And I really want to talk to you about all of it, but there's so much of it to talk about. So I guess um, I want to start with something pretty incredible, which is that your journey has led you to be a champion athlete, that, (laughs) (laughs) that you've won I hope I've got this right. Correct me if I'm wrong. So two golds and one bronze yes. as a um, in the World Parasurfing Championships and you have represented Australia in para canoeing as well. Yes. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty cool. It's extremely yeah. cool. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, no, it is, it's, it's pretty exciting, I think, representing your country. I mean, never in a million years would I have ever thought I would have the chance to do that. And it's um, and it's such an extraordinary story on how you came to be a world, you know, a world champion athlete and a, and an athlete on a world stage. It's um, so can we go back for those who don't know your story and mm-hmm. let's have a chat about Sam Bloom and uh, who and <laughs> <laughs> how you sort of got to this stage. So you've always been a really outdoorsy kind of chick. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I've always been a tomboy and always loved, actually, I've always, just, we've always loved traveling. That's the thing. And we, you know, um, and well, I met Cam, who's my husband now, when we were 19. And he was the same. He, he just had this like passion for adventure, actually, and meeting different people from all around the world. So we spent a lot of time traveling because that's what we love doing. So, yeah, and it was always off the beaten track, which we, which is what we love. You know, we'd go sort of our first trip, you know, we went to Europe, as you do after you finish uni, and <laughs> instead of sort of travelling, you know, through Germany and, you know, all the usual countries, we ended up going through the Middle East, which we absolutely loved. So, wow. yeah, that's kind of, yeah, we always like just doing something a little bit different. All right, so take us then to a life-changing moment for you if you're comfortable to talk about this. Yeah. Um, it's so you, you and Cam, mm-hmm. childhood sweethearts if you like, young uh, lovers, and you uh, <laughs> end up having children together. Yes. Your, yes so we, we had three boys. We have three boys. Your beautiful boys, yes. Um, also outdoorsy if uh, anyone's following yes. along with you on Insta. 
And um, and you guys go on a holiday to Thailand. Yes, I know. I couldn't believe it because we we wanted to kind of inst- instill our love of travel in the kids. You know, that's what I always dreamed we would do. I always wanted to travel with them and take them to, you know, pretty crazy places, like remote places like where Cam and I visited. And it's so frustrating, actually, because we were, we were going to take them to Ethiopia. That was our plan. We were going to fly to um, Egypt and then fly down to Ethiopia. But at the time, it was too dangerous to take them to Egypt. There was a lot of unrest in Cairo. So that's yeah. why we chose Thailand. Because, you know, we figured well, it's, it's close, lovely people, great food. So, yeah, so we flew to um, Phuket and we started heading north and we found this really nice um, hotel. It was essentially in the middle of nowhere. And it was our second day there and one of the kids spotted an um, observation deck. So we all went up there to just to have, um, have our drink, our juice and look at the view. And I leant on a railing and it had dry rot and I didn't realise. So I fell six metres and, yeah, broke my back and sustained numerous other injuries. So I can't say it was my favourite holiday. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that it is certainly not your favourite holiday. No. Um, it's an extraordinary thing to have happened um, to anybody. Uh, I imagine that it's one of those things where most of us, and I have a, a love of travel as well, Sam, where we yeah. go off on these adventures and then think, we never think that anything like that could happen in our no. lives. No, no, but it was such a... I so I, I think I was so angry at myself. It's like, why did I lean on the railing? Like it was just I don't know. It was such a such a silly thing to have happened. Yeah. But you know, it was. I guess it was just a freak accident. And I'm so thankful that one of the kids didn't lean on the railing. Yeah. Or can she? If if one of us had to fall, I'm glad it was me. Oh. Well, look, I, I you know I'm not glad that it was any of you. <laughs> um, sure, but... put that out there and I am incredibly sorry that it happened to you and it and I hope in talking about this that it doesn't you know bring up terrible memories as no, well it doesn't well actually no I don't have any memory of the accident my yeah. last memory is um going swimming in the morning with the kids and then ordering a juice and that's it so and I don't nothing. remember going up the stairs or obviously leaning on the railing so, yeah, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy how, you, um, how your brain can just wipe out memories. And just protect you maybe, you know, from that moment. Yeah, maybe, yeah. 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 And um, so how long were you, obviously you're in a hospital in Thailand. How long yeah. were you in a hospital in Thailand for? Um, I was in hospital for about three weeks. So, um, yeah, after my accident, obviously they, they called an ambulance and they took me to like a, like a regional hospital. And essentially they were trying, I'd fractured my skull and I was bleeding from, from my head. And, they were, and I, I feel so bad that Cam was holding me. They were shaving my hair, obviously to stitch me up. And I was being rude to them. I can't believe it. And I am never, I can't believe it. I was like not telling them off, but perhaps I was. So, so yeah, they, um, they x-rayed me there as well and realized that my injuries were pretty severe. So we drove about three or four hours up to a private hospital. Wow. in a place called Bang Sapan, and I spent about a week and a half there. And then I was transported to Bangkok and spent a week and a half there as well and then flew home. And then flew home. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And in some ways it must have been a huge relief, I guess, to get back to home, uh, New South mm-hmm. Wales. Um, yes, and, yes, yeah. come back to Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, they were lovely in Thailand and – Honestly, because I hit my head when I fell, so I had like, um, like subdural and extra dural bleeds, like just bleeding, bleeding on the brain. And wow. um, so my memory's a little bit sketchy, to be honest. I think they just, the headaches were like the most insane thing I've ever experienced. So I think they were just, they'd come in, I remember the nurses would come in and just inject some sort of painkiller. So I was a little bit out of it. Out of it, my, yeah. Yeah, my memory's not great, but... Yeah, I just remember, I remember being in, in Bangkok though and um, I'd get taken down, we were down to like this physio room and um, the physio, he was so lovely and he'd like get me to lift like these super light weights and I think we'd get to, he'd, he'd be counting and then we'd get to 20, he'd be going, 20! And I, yeah. <laughs> he was so lovely and I remember that. Um, but yeah, other than yeah, that, wow. it's, pretty, it's pretty, 
yeah, it's amazing, like how your memory can just go. Yeah, wow. Um, I guess um, because your story is so extraordinary, um, it, it actually, you know, you you and Cam, so Cam's a photographer and yes. your hubby, and he took the most stunning photographs of <laughs> things that were about to happen when you got home. So you get home and understandably you're feeling completely lost, I'm guessing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. When, well, when, because when I got back to Sydney, from, when I f- flew back to Sydney, because you know, this will sound really strange, but when I was in Thailand, I actually didn't know I was paralysed. I Probably a just, lot of painkillers, Sam. Yeah, it must have been. They must have really given me a heap. No, because the doctors kept saying, Oh, it's spinal shock. And they're like, oh, you know, in like six weeks or so, it will kind of get better. So that was in my head. I'm like, yeah, okay, I can do that. That's fine. So it wasn't until I got back to Sydney and that's when the doctor um, told me that I would essentially never walk again. So, yeah, I was devastated. Like I was, I was, I've never felt like that in my life, like so sad and so angry and wish I'd died. And, yeah, I wasn't in a good space at all. So um, I was... I spent about seven months in hospital. So, yeah, like when, you, when I came home, that was probably the hardest, the hardest period out of all of it because that's when my reality set in. And, man, I was like, oh, this is my new life, and I hated it, to be honest. So, yeah, I was in a very, very dark place. Yeah, and understandably so because it's life-altering. And it ta- it, 100%. I, yeah, and I can't imagine – how long it takes to a a really acknowledge I guess that this is this is not going to change um yeah yeah but a big change for all of you for your whole family right oh absolutely yeah and I felt so guilty my guilt has just played a huge role in it for me you know because before I went to Thailand I was always happy and you know be playing soccer and riding skateboards and just and going surfing and you know just doing fun things and when I came home I was so I was just so sad I wasn't I wasn't the same person it was almost like my whole identity had been taken from me you know instead of being like yeah like a super chilled mum I was just sad I was just sad and grumpy so that was hard that was hard for the kids yeah yeah and and hard for you too it's a really interesting thing that I speak to so many extraordinary women on this podcast who've gone through very, very different things, very, a lot of very diverse kind of experiences. Yeah. The one thing that I find unifying and really interesting is that all women who are mothers tend to carry this enormous guilt, guilt. about our responses or reactions to things so out of our control. Um, yeah, I know. But you can't help it, though. Yeah, right? It's, um, it's kind of inbuilt. And... um. So, so you, you've come home, you find yourself learning to navigate a world um, suddenly in a wheelchair, um, yeah. not the way that you used to be living your life, and angry, upset, understandably mm-hmm. bloody so. And then, yeah. um, so tell us about this uh, little creature who comes <laughs> into your life. <laughs> Yes. And, and kind of started to make a big difference to you but also to the whole family. Yeah, she did. So I'd, I was home for about three months and, yeah, like I said, in a terrible, terrible headspace. And um, my middle son Noah and I went to my mum's house for lunch and I wasn't driving at the time so mum had to drive us home. And then when we went out to mum's car, Noah spotted a little baby magpie that had been blown out of her nest. And she was so, she was so small and so vulnerable. And we thought if we left her there, she may have died. So obviously we picked her up and brought her home. And, yeah, she just brought happiness into our, into our house, which was so lacking. And I think for me, the one thing I really loved is everybody, including myself, we put all our energy and focus into her because she, she, you know, she was so tiny and she needed to be fed every two hours. And so I think that's what I, I really loved, you know. 
Would Hello, up, like, Sandy yeah, here from the Good Girl Confessional yeah, Podcast. The Good Girl Confessional yeah. Podcast is proudly okay. brought to us by WB40, a platform for women 40, 50, 60 and beyond. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see the rest of the video, please head over to WB40.com and subscribe to WB40 Extra. By subscribing to WB40 Extra, you're helping to support the hard won wisdom of incredible women. So thank you. Please remember to like, share and follow.